So I'm going to try this exercise called the soccer ball exercise and I'm going to download the source file because it's got a bunch of stuff loaded into it and hit save and open it up. It should open up in no time. And we're started with this scene here and in the library I've built in three kinds of spheres that you can choose to play with. I'll start with a maybe a soccer ball this time. And what we want to do is we want to turn this soccer ball picture into a symbol to get started. And you'll see that it's actually very, very big too. Uh, so I'm going to start by um, grabbing that object and hitting the F8 key or modify convert to symbol. And I'll call this ball. And now we can go into the ball symbol over here in the library and start messing around with it to make it behave the way we want it to be. And one of the first things I think I want to do is I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Something like that. And the next thing I want to do is I would like to create a mask for this. I'm going to call this ball. And once we're editing the symbol, and notice inside here we are inside the symbol doing the editing. If I right mouse click and I create a mask, oh I've turned it into a mask. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do that. I'm going to create a mask layer over top of this. And the mask layer is going to decide what is transparent and what isn't. So if I go like this, this will give me this superpower that I can turn one thing into something that's transparent. I believe the mask goes over top. I'm going to draw an oval over top of this and say I only want certain parts of this to be transparent. Oval. Doesn't matter what color I use here. Now I notice it's locked to begin with. And if I turn this off and go, to, go here, I hope I can edit this. I'm going to draw a sphere roughly where I want it. Now I unlocked the layer in order to do this. Oh, I really don't need that stroke there. By stroke. And I'll hit the Q key. That's to free transform. Make it a little bit wider, a little bit taller. And when I turn those layers back on, when I turn the or when I lock those layers again, it performs the mask and it hides the outside fringes from the soccer ball. So now I can go back to the scene where I have this thing. Because I modified that symbol, the instance of that symbol here is exactly what I want it to be. So this is the first trick to this, learning how to use masks. And the next trick I wanted to introduce in this exercise is this business of using motion guides. And to start out with, this little white dot is incredibly important. It's called the registration point. It decides where the most important part of the symbol or the instance of the symbol is going to be. And now what I want to do, I think, now that I've done this part, is I would like to give this background... Oh, no, wait, I want to give this thing its own layer. I better cut this instance. I don't want it on my background layer because I want to tween it. I better give it its own layer. And I'll call this ball. And I will paste in place in that frame. Edit, paste in place, or Control-Shift-V to put it where I want it. And it is that symbol that I want to give a classic motion guide to. And you'll notice it really changes how things look up here. The ball is still in place, but now I have an extra place to put the path that I want it to follow. And I'm going to start with a straight line, and I'm going to start that straight line roughly where that registration point was, and we can always correct that later. And I'm going to try to make it look like this ball is going way off into the distance by drawing just a simple line. And by the way, it's really important that that line is not grouped in any way. So when I drew that line, it's a good idea sometimes to make sure this option is not on. Object drawing, if it's on, that's a problem. Okay. So now I've got the path. What's nice about that path is I can take that like any line and I can do things like bending it. So I'm going to have it sort of look like it's bending and going off into the distance like that. So this is the path I want it to follow. Now, to make this thing animate, I've got to figure out how many seconds this will take. Maybe two seconds. So at 24 frames per second, I'll go to frame 48 or so roughly there. I'm going to hit F5 so that I stretch the animation to last two seconds long. The background stays there. And here's the next bit. If I'm going to tween this thing, I better go to the last frame and hit an F6. Okay, that gives me a complete copy of that instance in its own frame. And I'm going to go and put in the classic tween. Got it. So the starting point is here, and right now the ending point is in the exact same location. But I can now grab this instance and I'll see if I can put it so that the registration point is still on the path that I want it to follow. And if I tween this now, oh yeah, look at that. It follows the path perfectly. Now there's other things we can play around with here. It makes sense if this thing's falling into, this, into the, towards the horizon. 
whoops, I want to shrink this thing down. So now it looks a little more believable that it's being launched into the distance. And if I play this, ah, oh, good. You'll notice, though, as I play it, it looks like it's almost speeding up as it gets closer to the horizon, and that's because I've got a constant speed on this tween. The next big trick of this is we want to add an ease out. That is, we want it to, to slow down in its motion when it gets close to the end of the tween. And an ease out, I think, is dragging this little slider to the right. Now, I don't want it to slow to a dead stop. It's not like it starts to hover when it gets to the end, so we'll take it down to like an 80% and see how that looks. And it starts, starts fast, at least it should, and should start to slow down when it gets to the end. And you can test this with a control test movie, or control enter. And it shows you roughly how the animation is going to fly. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you use layer masks, motion guides, and how you ease out. There's lots of other tricks. Read up on it. Good luck to you.